Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Alienware M15 R2. This is the 2019 version of a seriously fun, packed, and awesomely powerful little gaming laptop from Alienware that sports a 15.6 inch display and some serious specification options. This model that I am testing out includes the Intel Core i7-9750H CPU, 16GB of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Max-Q GPU, and a 4K screen that's capable of 60Hz refresh rate. Now it's worth noting that you can also get a 1080p screen with 144Hz or 240Hz if that's your bag, so there are plenty of different options. There are also lots of specification options that are worth looking at and different variants but I really like the 4k model and it comes here as you can see in this lunar light which is kind of a white color you can also get it in dark side of the moon but the lunar light really looks awesome it sports a number of really cool design aesthetics and it, that includes this cool honeycomb style venting system a really nicely designed and nice looking backlit keyboard that's customizable on a per key basis that I will note is slightly frustrating to use and I'll go on to a bit more depth on that later on. And a wealth of connection options. It has Ethernet ports, multiple USB ports and USB-C, Thunderbolt at the rear as well as HDMI outputs, a mini display port output, the Thunderbolt port is also DisplayPort capable, so you can put out to multiple different screens and it also will run latest VR devices without any problems. So I managed to run an Oculus Rift S on it without any issue as well. It really looks fantastic and this finish on it is also really awesome. It's a slightly rubberized texture to it, feels really comfortable to use. And the design of it is really well built. It's designed with this really cool venting system where it pulls in cool air from the top near the back of the keyboard and blows it out of the back it manages to keep pretty cool and I'll show you the thermal performance a bit later on you can adjust thermals and the speed of the fans as you're gaming you'll notice design aesthetics include an RGB light strip around the rear there RGB lighting on the Alienware logo on the rear panel as well and backlit keyboard and RGB lighting on the power button as well which is this Alien Head 2. And you've got a really stylish looking laptop here that isn't over the top with the lighting. You can individually adjust that lighting so you can set it how you want it and obviously turn it off if you want to use it in the office. Now the highlight for me is the screen. It's almost certainly magnificent. It'd be really hard to demonstrate in this but I found it immediately I was struck by just how vivid, colourful and awesome the screen is, it's a really fantastic looking screen. It's very reflective as you can see, you can see the reflection of a microphone there. Now the design of the keyboard is interesting, it has a very rubberized sort of feel to the external edges of the keyboard which is really comfortable to rest your hands on and doesn't seem to pick up dirt like you might think. You might think this white design would pick up dirt really easily but it actually doesn't seem to. It is a compact keyboard and it's all very central so I found that a bit difficult to get used to because I'm used to the keyboard sort of being edge to edge and this one isn't. The keyboard is very much in the middle of it so it takes a bit of getting used to in terms of the usage. Also the track point pad is meant to be a bit more accurate than usual but I found it a bit fussy and for gaming it's just useless but that's mostly the case with laptops anyway. The keyboard itself though is very nice to use it looks really swish and as I said you can adjust it the lighting on a per key basis and the RGB lighting isn't too in your face. Another thing you'll notice at the bottom of the screen here is a little camera that is Toby eye tracking that's really cool and I'll show you that a bit later on but basically that can be used for a number of different things that includes things like the keeping the screen on, dimming the display and tracking your eye movement when you're in game as well. Now I tested the laptop out with a number of different games including Rainbow Six Siege, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Cuisine Royale, some VR games and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. 
is some benchmarking and some real world testing. Now, obviously in 4K, I wanted to be able to see what that was like and it does look magnificent. The thing that I've noticed is if you put it on 4K and you whack the visuals up as high as possible, then your FPS is not great. You're looking at somewhere between 20 and 40 FPS uh, when playing most of the games that I tried out. Rainbow Six Siege, everything set to Ultra in 4K, it ran at around 30 FPS. Not amazing, not likely to blow your socks off, but it still really looks beautiful. Now, if you want to go for a, a bit of better performance, you'd probably pick the 1080p panel with maybe the 240Hz refresh rate or the 144Hz refresh rate. If you're going for the 4K, you get the 4K HDR screen, you're probably looking for the, the visual pleasure and you want something a bit more stunning, and you will get it. I found that this display was really nice looking, and I didn't have any problems with the performance in terms of lag or anything like that but just the FPS is just not very high and that's to be expected because you cram in you know some pretty high core tech into a very small gaming machine but also you're asking a lot of it to power a 4k screen at anything really decent so you can see here it's just getting around the high 30s and now Rainbow Six Siege isn't the newest game but it is quite taxing so you know it's you see it running like that and I'll show you some benchmarks and seconds of how it got on with other games and what the performance was like on those but basically you're expecting to not have a very high FPS in most of the games you're playing but if you're buying the 4K screen you're expecting that but you can always opt to turn it down to 1080p so I did that and I've done it here and you can see now we're pushing high 70s 80s and 90s in terms of FPS and that's 1080p but it's still everything cranked up to ultra so performance almost doubles maybe triples depending on the games you're playing if you go for 1080p instead of 4k so if you feel like you're not getting the performance out of the 4k and you want a better FPS then you can obviously change your settings quite easily and still get good performance also the Alienware command center software which I've not covered in a great depth in this video but I'll show you briefly basically allows you to do things like adjusting overclocking, you can adjust the thermal performance so you can crank the thermals up higher, you can uh, set the power balance to push more towards the game and stuff, you can uh, adjust it that way and uh, you know that gets you some extra FPS and uh, extra performance improvement as well. Now you can see the keyboard from the side here and you get this nice little light bleed from underneath the keys and a very comfortable gaming experience is accurate actually and it is very good once you get used to the keys being very much central on the keyboard it's quite nice to use and it's not a problem trackpad however I just couldn't get on with with gaming at all in Windows it's fairly accurate and easy enough to use but you can't really use the trackpad in any way and that's pretty standard now you can see it's very hard to give a good vision of how vivid and wonderful the screen is but it's a 400 nit screen you can get up to there's the specification options and it's incredibly bright really really vivid the only downside is these reflections you can see the reflection here of the room behind me is reflecting on the screen and it, when you're sitting in front of it and you're playing it's not necessarily a problem but it's something to worth bearing in mind uh, minor minor gripe though now this laptop as i said has several outputs to be able to put out to other screens i tested it out with a 34 inch 1440p screen and it handled that really well played some cuisine royale output uh, via hdmi to that screen and it was getting about 90 fps here you can see benchmarking with rainbow six siege and i think this was set to 4K and you can see it averaged out at about 48 FPS. Did a similar benchmark with Assassin's Creed or Odyssey. Again, everything's set to maximum. This is at 4K, this is sped up slightly, but you'll see the results are very middling. You're not gonna get the bleeding edge in terms of FPS, but you do get a fantastic visual experience. The screen is absolutely incredible. You see it averaged at about 27 FPS, which is not great minimum 11 maximum 52 obviously again you can turn it down to 1080p get a much better performance out of it I did notice some strange things when benchmarking I had some problems couldn't get 3d mark to run on here and also had some issues with recording some games as well which was a bit odd now just to demonstrate thermal performance if you go into the Alienware command center you can adjust the balance of the fan so you can increase the fan speed you can shove it all the way up to high performance or full speed there's also balanced and quiet modes and you can see you just got this sound level meter to show you what 
the noise gets up to and it gets around the high 60s when put on full tilt and this is after obviously been playing and benchmarking as well so it gives you an idea and you can turn it back down again set it to quiet or balance and it goes a lot quieter suddenly drops right back down and actually just during general use I didn't find the fans too obnoxious and that's quite unusual for a thin laptop you usually find these thin high-end gaming laptops that pack a lot of sort of high spec tech into them they get really hot they make a lot of noise and the performance isn't great but this one actually does really well and it's not too bad it does get hot on the lap and I did find when the games were a bit more intensive if I push the keys down like if you're using WASD a bit if you held the keys down a bit too long you could feel the heat underneath it wasn't necessarily burning my fingers but it was certainly getting very warm and that's just sitting on the desk obviously the gaming on the lap gets quite hot again I'd recommend using it on a desk now you can see the Toby eye tracking stuff here now the Toby eye tracking works in Windows and you can get a plugin that will work with Twitch and YouTube and Mixer and stuff and that will show you where your eyes are going and show your audience where your eyes are going on the screen which is pretty neat and you can see a demonstration of it here within the software shows you where your eyes are and you can calibrate that to change depending on who's using it as well and then it has basic experience settings within the software that you can also use so for example this tool will track to see whether you're looking at the screen or not and if you aren't it automatically dims the screen in order to save battery life so if you step away for a moment or even if you're looking at something else briefly it will dim that screen and then you can wake it back up you can also do various other things such as saying it to stay awake when you're in front of it turn on the screen when you approach it wake and wake on looking at the Alienware logo sorts of things so it's mapping where your eyes are going around the screen and working out what you're looking at now as I said the 4k screen this variant also supports HDR so if you have games that can support it then you can play with HDR on and I did this in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and it looked really really good really enjoyable and uh, <laughs> very pretty experience however I couldn't get it to run on Assassin's Creed Odyssey but apparently that's quite a common issue now one issue I did have with the screen which I'm trying to demonstrate here is when the brightness was turned down ever so occasionally randomly you'd see a couple of pixels that would just light up really bright white and it was really hard to demonstrate that happening very often consistently so it's not like there's a dead pixel but it would just pick up every now and then where there was a random problem with a white very white pixel appearing and then disappearing and that's a very odd issue to have now here you can see the Toby eye tracking in action let me demonstrate what that looks like now basically this is running Shadow of the Tomb Raider and the eye tracking allows you to move the camera around without actually touching your mouse so if you look into the corners and edges of the screen the screen will then move around with you and you can use that to not only look about in the game but also engage with the world so it works uh, if you get in a battle with enemies in the game and you look at them naturally as you would with your eyes the aiming system also locks onto them so it makes it actually quicker to acquire targets when you get into a gunfight which is really nice but it also makes it slightly more immersive it's really hard to demonstrate how impressive this system is you know, and try to show what I'm looking at but it doesn't really correlate that well but once you get the experience of this it's really cool now Toby Eye Tracking apparently works with over 130 games I believe and that includes Tomb Raider and a number of other ones and that's really nice little addition to the game now one of the gripes I had with this laptop is that this model comes with a really interesting pretty decent spec but only a 512 gigabyte hard drive which is pretty paltry I managed to fill that up with just a handful of games and uh, it's pretty frustrating now you can opt to upgrade to have another 512 to so get a terabyte in there for an extra 300 pounds which is extortionate and you can obviously go for a two terabyte raid on it as well and that's 700 pounds so i mean that's about 700 dollars 800 dollars uh, to give you an idea uh, which is just nuts now i took it apart because i was curious to see whether you could install your own and it turns out that there is a spare slot on there for another mvme drive so you could technically just do it yourself rather than paying Dell and Alienware an extortionate amount of money. So you can see here there is a slot for installing an extra one but you can also access the standard OS drive as well. 
So you could theoretically buy two two terabyte NVMe SSD drives and then install them yourselves, and then you'd have to reinstall Windows and all the drivers and everything else. But that might be the easier way to do it, or stick with the 512 and then just buy a two terabyte or a single terabyte driver as your extra NVMe drive to put your games on. Uh, and much cheaper to do it yourself, and it's really easy to do as well. Just take that back panel off take out the drives and replace them or put a new one in. Now all in all this has been a really good gaming laptop to use. It's very powerful, very good screen, the cooling is actually pretty effective. It does get hot but it is a thin gaming laptop, it doesn't get so hot that it doesn't work. The 4K variant obviously the FPS is a bit middling but that's what to be expected but I do think the vivid screen is really good. The audio is also excellent, the speakers are really capable I also found that there was bouncing audio off the surrounding walls so you get a very good virtual surround sound experience out of it as well. The speakers are obviously good enough to drown out any noise from the fans too and generally the experience has been really fantastic and it should be for the amount of money but this is one of the best looking most powerful and interesting gaming laptops that I've tried. You do definitely get what you pay for. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos, as well as taking a look in the description for links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this. And have a great life.